this pandemic sucks. You're stuck at home trying to work as video games and YouTube educate your children. But COVID-19 is a serious public health problem. One of the reasons is the math behind how the disease spreads. You might have heard the words exponential growth. In this video, I will explain the concept through pictures and a simple problem. You own a small business, and business is ground to a halt because of the pandemic. The United States government is going to help you out. Uncle Sam gives you two options. Option A, you get $500,000 over the course of 10 weeks. Option B, you get $1,000 in week one, you get $2,000 in week two, you get $4,000 in week three, and the amount of money that you get every week doubles from the previous week over the course of 10 weeks. Which one should you take? Let's visualize the money that you get with both options. In this visual, each box represents $1,000. So to visualize the $500,000 in option A, there are 500 boxes. I've grouped these 500 boxes into 20 columns. And as you go down each of the columns, there are going to be 25 boxes. With option B in week one, you only have one box. Now, with option A, you get that $500,000 over the course of 10 weeks. Still, the $50,000 you get in week one with option A is much more than what you get with option B. The money grows very slowly with option B over the first few weeks. By week five, if you sum up your money from option B, you get $31,000 total, which still isn't as much as you got with option A in week one. Option B looks terrible. Your money doubles again in week six. You get $32,000. And finally, you have $63,000 total from option B. You finally cleared what you got with option A in week one. But with option B, each week, you double what you got the previous week. $64,000 in week seven. $128,000 in week eight. $256,000 in week nine. After nine weeks, you have $511,000, which is more than you'll get in the entire 10 weeks with option A. And you still have another week to go. You get $512,000 in week 10 with option B. Let's compare the two options. First, we'll stack the 10 weeks of option A back into one rectangle. And to make the comparison fit on the screen, I'm going to rotate that rectangle of $500,000 by a quarter turn clockwise. I've also moved it up a bit to make room for option B. Then we'll stack all the blue squares from option B into a rectangle with 20 rows. Option B offers over double the money of option A. You get $1,027,000 with option B. Let's look at these two options plotted as a function of time. With option A, you see the money grows by a constant amount each week. You get $50,000 each week. The money from option A is a straight line, which shows you how your money grows by a constant amount each week. With option B, you see a different picture. In the first few weeks, you can barely make out the growth in your money compared to option A. This growth in your money becomes massive in the later weeks. It's much easier to view option B with the doubling of money each week on a different type of plot. In the plot you see now, a straight line like option A adds a constant amount each week. Now let's change the y-axis to what the math folks call a log scale. Now a constant shift along that axis means multiplying by a factor. On the labels, you see that it goes from 1,000 to 10,000 to 100,000 to a million. Traveling a constant amount along the y-axis means multiplying, not adding, by a constant factor. The money from option B is approximately a straight line. A straight line on this type of plot means exponential growth at a constant rate. With the money from option B, the rate is approximately doubling every week. Let's go back one more time. On a normal plot, a constant shift on the y-axis means adding by a constant amount. 
The green line from option A shows this type of adding by a constant amount. When we change the y-axis to this log scale, a constant shift on the y-axis means multiplying by a constant. The doubling growth of option B is now approximately a straight line. Now, this is a toy problem. However, I picked these numbers for a reason. On the same chart, let's put the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the United States. The first dot is on March 9th. There were 554 confirmed cases. It was also the day of the Rudy Gobert incident. In a press conference, the NBA star joked about COVID-19 by touching every microphone and recorder. Two days later, he came down with the disease and the NBA suspended its season. I'd like to make fun of Gobert, but I can't. More on that later. Each data point shows the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the United States after another week. The data points are shown so that time matches up with the money problem from before. The data from our world and data shows two different growth rates. Through March, the number of cases grew rapidly. The growth of the number of confirmed cases grew at a lower rate through April. I'm not an expert at epidemiology, so I'm not going to give you an interpretation of this data. However, I am an expert at math, and I can definitively tell you that when data appears as a straight line on this type of log plot, it means exponential growth at a constant rate. To see this more clearly, let's look at the data every day. The last data point is May 11th. The plot shows a best fit line through the last 14 data points. This shows that the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the United States has grown at a rate of doubling about every month. If you're going to remember one thing from this video, it should be this. COVID-19 spreads exponentially. I have some personal experience with COVID-19. I traveled to Boston for the Sloan Sports Analytics Conference the first week of March. And just like Rudy Gobert, I didn't take it seriously. My thinking was this. Up to 60,000 people die from the flu every year in the United States. Why don't we take things this seriously every year? I remember joking with a friend, saying that this year I would shake hands with people, and in a couple years when this COVID thing went away, then we could do the elbow bumps. Gotta be careful about the flu. But there was something about COVID-19 that I didn't understand. I got back to Ann Arbor the next week, and I felt pretty sick. I went in on Wednesday and I tested negative for the flu. I asked if I could be tested for the coronavirus, but I didn't qualify to get tested at that point, even though I had just gotten off a plane from Boston. The protocol for testing changed the next day and I went back to the clinic and they said, oh no, you don't have to come into the clinic. We'll come out to your car. Two days later, my test was negative and I thought, great, I don't have anything to worry about. The next Monday, I get a text from my friend from Boston. He told me that his fiance had tested positive. And that's when I thought, oh, crap. It was Friday night in the Liberty Hotel, and we were all having drinks and having a good time. We were about to have a toast, but I had just run out of my drink. She was kind enough to pour me a little bit of hers, and we all had a toast. By the end of the week, two more of my friends had tested positive. And two more of my friends from Boston were very sick. COVID-19 ripped through my friends in Boston like Baby Yoda went through the internet. Then, the next week, my wife tested positive. So, I guess there's some small chance that I had a common cold while everyone else I was around in a two-week period had COVID, but I don't really think that's the case. The thing that I didn't realize about COVID was how infectious it was. The research shows that COVID is more infectious than the flu, and I have personal experience with that. The infectiousness of the disease definitely governs how it grows. And remember, the data shows that the number of cases in the United States is still growing exponentially. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Ed Fang. I highly recommend checking out some of the plots of COVID-19 on this log scale. I have left some links to the New York Times and Johns Hopkins below. I've used this problem of option A versus option B where the money doubles in math class before. However, I only got inspired to make this video after they talked about this problem on Radiolab and how it related to COVID-19. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. 
If you'd like the idea of more videos based on data visualization, please subscribe to this channel. It'll definitely give me the motivation to make more of these. Mimo, is there anything that you would like to add?